I'm amazing. I'm Batman. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Dean was the best supernatural character. Oh, uh, since the last time we saw you, I killed Hitler. Oh. For this list, we'll be looking at some of Supernatural's most memorable moments where Dean Winchester was our absolute favorite. Which Dean moments stick out in your mind? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Mind Over Michael As Lucifer takes Jack, Dean's left with no other option than to finally accept being Michael's vessel in season 13. If we do this, it's a one-time deal. I'm in charge. You're the engine. But I'm behind the wheel. Of course, despite the conditions the older Winchester tries to put in place, the alternate version of the Archangel reneges on the deal, forcing Dean to imprison Michael in his brain. While at a diner in season 14, Castiel notices the toll this Michael problem has taken on his friend. Hey, Dean, I'm fine. What you're doing. And even just sitting here and having a cup of coffee is an Herculean feat. Dean doesn't only admit that he doesn't know if he's fine, but he also describes the sheer willpower it takes to keep Michael at bay. There's this pounding in my head. It never stops. Michael's in there, and he is fighting hard. To get out. Though Cass reminds Dean he isn't alone, Dean responds with three little words that demonstrate the depth of his selflessness and his willingness for self-sacrifice to prevent Michael from getting loose. We still have plan B. Dean, come on. Coffin. Ocean. Done. Number 9. Deanman Demon Dean was a treat for fans because we got to see Dean be a total dick. After dying with the mark of Cain, Dean comes back to life as a demon at the end of season 9. Now you know your brother gave me the uh, green light to put one between your eyes, right? This new version of Dean is selfish and all ego, a creature of pure impulse and satisfaction. A way more violent character, Demon Dean seemed to enjoy the ruthlessness that came out when he didn't get his way. You're an addict. Death is your drug. And you're gonna spend the rest of your life chasing that dragon. So? And while our time with Deanman was brief, it was fun to see Jensen Ackles play almost the opposite of the character we've come to associate with him. What did you think was gonna happen? How uh, you just stroll up here and say my name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. This Dean even went as far as to claim he didn't care about the life of his brother Sam and refer to the Impala, his baby, as just a car. It's filthy. It's just a car, Sam. It's just a car. Wow. <laughs> really have gone dark. Number 8. Taste of Fear Despite being a CW show, Supernatural has some pretty spooky moments. <laughs> Dean is often portrayed as this macho, alpha male type character who tends to rarely be phased by anything. One of the best moments of the whole series is in Season 4. In Yellow Fever, the brothers are investigating the deaths of a few townspeople and Dean gets affected by a sickness that makes him fearful of everything. I don't like the looks of those teenagers down there. Let's walk this way. It starts out with anxiety, but progresses to full-blown panic and then eventual death. They get to the good stuff. Symptoms are you get anxious, then yeah. scared, then really scared, then your heart gives out. Sound familiar? This episode thus totally flips Dean's characterization and leads to some hilarious moments along with the aforementioned spooky ones. <laughs> Number 7. Deep Death Pizza There have been some monumental moments in Supernatural, but very few come close to Dean and Death's first meeting. Not only was the introduction of this Horseman of the Apocalypse one of the most unforgettably intimidating moments of the series, but the subsequent conversation between Death and Dean also shows the former's superiority over the latter. The ancient primordial entity treats Dean like nothing more than a blip in time, and has little time for questions. To a thing like me, a thing like you, well... 
Think how you'd feel if a bacterium sat at your table and started to get snarky. While death is likely deserving of his own top 10 list, what makes this scene ultimately work is Dean's ability to keep his cool in the face of literal death. What about Chicago? I suppose you can stay. I like the pizza. Number six, everyone's time traveling dream. Pretty much everyone has wished to do this, and as it turns out, Dean is the one who gets to live out everyone's fantasy of killing Hitler in this season 12 episode. After Hitler's soul is put back into a physical body, Dean has the enormous pleasure of sending one of history's worst to hell. I'll this. Sending off the resurrected Führer with a bullet and an appropriate one-liner, Dean becomes instantly elated with his actions and relishes the fact that he gets to say that he killed Hitler. I killed Hitler. I killed Hitler. I killed Hitler. I think that entitles me to free drinks for the rest of my life. I'm going to get t-shirts made. You know no one's going to believe you, right? But you believe me. You were there. Dean tells Sam that he isn't planning on letting this go, and makes sure to bring it up whenever possible in subsequent episodes. Oh, uh, since the last time we saw you, I killed Hitler. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Like, seriously, he won't shut up about it. But in all honesty, can we blame him? Let's go. Go where? To... Dude. We fought the devil, okay? I've killed Hitler. I think we can handle a few old pipes. Number five, a soul for a brother's life. Dean has always been about protecting his little brother, and when he fails to do so, he's left wondering what else he's supposed to do. What am I supposed to do? In the season two finale, Dean summons a demon to make the ultimate deal following a fit of pure rage and emotion. Following in daddy's footsteps, you want to make a deal. Little Sammy back from the dead and let me guess, you're offering up your own soul? There are a hundred other demons who love to get their hands on it. Dean is so desperate that he's willing to sell his soul to the very creature he's sworn to eliminate, all for a chance to save his Sammy. While the usual deal is 10 years of life, this demon isn't so generous and forces Dean down to just one year to live in exchange for Sam's life. I'll do it. You'll bring him back? I will. And because I'm such a saint, I'll give you one year and one year only. Despite the lousy terms, Dean makes the deal and shows us the extent of his brotherly love. Have you got that low an opinion of yourself? Are you not screwed in the head? I couldn't let him die, Bobby. I couldn't. He's my brother. Number four, Rut Row Dean. Hi. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Dean. It's my brother Sam. Mind if we join you? Of course not. Mystery Inc. has had a lot of weird crossovers, and one of the best on that list is with Supernatural. Oh my god. That, 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 that's, uh, that's... That's the mystery machine. We're not just in any cartoon. We're in Scooby-Doo. On top of Scooby Natural just being a really great episode, no one is more excited for this cartoon melding of worlds than Dean. After getting transported to an episode of Scooby-Doo, Dean couldn't be more ecstatic to meet Scooby-Doo and the rest of the gang. This Supernatural episode is filled with laughs due to both shows having to adapt to the other, and it leads to some truly great scenes. Dean fully embraces the tropes of the animated TV series, even trying to flirt with Daphne a couple of times. If this is a real ghost, these guys are in trouble. We can't let anything happen to them. Exactly, so for now, let's follow Ascot Boy's lead. I call team up with Daphne. Great, it'll be just the three of us. The cherry on top is when Dean attempts to end the episode just like Scooby normally does after they solve a case. Would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Ooh, he said it. He what? said the line. <clears throat> Scooby -Doo -Doo -Doo. Number three, BFFs forever. Cass has been training in heaven to enact the angel's plans, and one of the things that he needs to learn to do is defeat Dean. He and Dean have an incredible bond, almost as strong as Sam and Dean's, which makes it hard for Cass to sever. If the demons get their hands on the angel tablet, they'll kill us all. They'll destroy heaven. I can reason with Dean. He's a good man. Kill him. 
When the moment finally comes, Cass can't do it, which means that Naomi takes control of him, and she does not hold back. You want it? Take it. And you're gonna have to kill me first. Come on, you coward. In a plea to get him to snap out of it, Dean tells Cass exactly how much the angel means to him. The moment is especially noteworthy because it reaffirms to both the characters and the audience that, even after all they've been through, Dean still cares this much about him. Yes. It's me. My family. I need you. I need you. Number 2. Tis better to have loved and lost. After Sam's sacrifice at the end of season 5, Dean promised him that he wouldn't try to bring him back, and that he'd settle down and be normal. So then what am I supposed to do? You go find Lisa. You pray to God she's dumb enough to take you in. You, you have barbecues and go to football games. You go live some normal apple pie life, Dean. Promise me. Dean keeps his promise and meets Lisa and Ben. They end up together and for a while it seems like Dean will have a calm life. Of course, this is supernatural and that's never the case, as Sam comes back and the boys head out again on the hunt. After Lisa and Ben are almost killed, Dean decides to make them forget who he is. Dean, thank God. Still gotta get you out of here. Okay, okay. Alright, go, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, Brad's not going anywhere. And neither am I. He asks Castiel to erase their memories and hopes that this will keep them safe. All else aside, I just wanted to fix what I could. There's one more thing you could do for me. Dean almost had the perfect life, but once again makes a tough choice for the greater good. I'd lost control for a minute. And I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. I'm real happy you two are both okay. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Dean would make one hell of a gym teacher. A game of skill, agility, cunning. A game with one simple rule. Dodge. Master of Disguise. Dean does his best to blend in at the psychiatric hospital. What are you boys doing in here? Pudding. I'm Batman. Not sure about Batman, but Dean would definitely make for a great Robin. I'm amazing. I'm Batman. Bruce, I forgive you for not saving me. But why? Why on God's earth? Is he still alive? Dean's love for pie, a red-blooded American. Now you want pie? I killed Hitler. I think I deserve some pie. Wanted dead or alive. It's never a bad time for some Bon Jovi. A little six string on my back. I play for keeps. Come on. I might not make it back. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sam over everything For most of the story, Dean's been the most consistently committed to the mission, as it's all he's known. In Season 9, it's revealed he took a step away from the family business when he was sent to a boy's home after some bad behavior. I wasn't on a hunt. They sent me to a boy's home. A boy's home? Like a reform school? Yeah, more or less. It was a farm, and the guy who ran it, Sonny, he, uh, he looked after me. Even more surprising is that he seemingly thrived there. Well, I guess we'll just have to keep practicing. Things obviously didn't stay that way forever, as John and Sam eventually came to get him. Though Sam thought Dean had been on a hunt. I just hope this lasts. I'm not going anywhere, Robin. Yeah, says you. 
Despite Dean's success, he chooses to leave the home, and it's implied he made the decision to keep an eye on his little bro. For always being there, for having my back. I mean, look, I know it always hasn't been easy. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Dean could have had a whole different life, but even at 16, he knew Sam was the most important thing to him above everything else. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.